civil society organizations reject the NBC order telling media organizations to stop reporting insecurity. And we'll be examining the legal issues arising from Matawale's defection. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anakon. The Civil Society Consortium on Civic Space has condemned the order by the administration of President Muhammad Buhari to monitor the media through the directive by the National Broadcasting Commission, NBC, to gag media houses, according to them. Uh, the convener of the consortium, Mbaseki Martin Obono, said the directive is a further attempt by the government to endanger the lives of citizens and prevent media organizations from reporting insecurity. According to him, the directive, which has its legal base from Section 5 of the NBC Code, is inconsistent with Section 22 of the 19th. 1999 constitution which talks about the role of media organizations and section 39 of the 1999 constitution which also talks about the freedom of expression and opinion and article 9 of the nigerian or the african charter on human and people's rights which is a right to receive information and free expression without interference. Well, joining us to discuss is Femi D. Amele. He's a broadcast journalist with Nigeria Info Abuja. We have Shegu Shopita, who is a, he is of the ACT Network, and we are being joined by Nicholas Ibekwe. He is uh, an investigative journalist with Premium Times. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I, I'm going to start with um, the fact that we know that the media bill or the media regulatory bill um, recently, which was being debated by all and sundry, has been suspended, obviously, as a result of the outcry uh, of Nigerians as to why this bill should even be an issue in the first instance. But now people are wondering, suspending the bill uh, or kicking it out entirely. Um, why should the National Assembly be suspending it? Shouldn't it be something that we should do away with? Uh, is there fear or cause for concern that this bill might just find its way back on the floor of the National Assembly? I'll start with you, Shegun. Well, Marianne, and um, good evening, Nigerians. <clears throat> um, you know, I, I love where you started from because I think that the issue of that bill is a far more fundamental threat to um, press freedom, um, uh, free, free, free speech, freedom of expression guaranteed by the Constitution and all of that, uh, simply because the bill seeks to place the practitioners in the media industry under the direct supervision of the government, of the, of the Minister of Information, I mean, and regardless of the personalities in government now, regardless of what we might think about them, you know, that can never be good. You know, the media must be independent, the media must be able to say and uh, see things as they say things as they see them um, at all times, uh, you know. So, um, them suspending the bill obviously is a result of all, the, all of the pressure and um, all of the agitation that has happened since, uh, you know, that bill came to the light of day. Um, I listened to the guy, the gentleman, that moved um, that bill, and he did say that he was stepping it down because um, he, he, he had heard, you know, the, the concerns of, 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 of Nigerians and of, of the media industry. You know, he was on a show, on a TV show, with the president of the Nigerian Union of Journalists, and he was, you know, he, he, it was clear that he could see the folly in some of the provisions of, of his bill. So if they're stepping it up, first of all, I, I don't even know why the bill is necessary, to be honest. I think that the NBC is powerful enough as it is, if not too powerful. Um, so stepping it down, uh, suspending it is a good thing. I think it's just junk it entirely. It's completely and utterly unnecessary and unneeded. And I would advise you know, the National Assembly that there are a lot more pressing issues for them to you know, address their minds to and their energies to 
than you know trying to stifle um, the press and trying to put the press under the control of the government. They need to spend their time and our resources. Remember that they're, 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 they're taking taxpayers' monies to do all of these things. So they need to spend their time and our resources on uh, things that will better further you know, the development and the advancement of, 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 of the common and the average Nigeria. I'm going to ask you one more question before I go to Mr. Ipeke. Um is, is the media not already regulated as it is? Because, um, of course, we have the NBC code um, and then we have ob obviously the ethics, the rules and regulations as to how you should go about your reportage or your presentations. That's, that's the code in itself. But, but then there have been arguments of, you know, under regulation or over regulation, if there's any such thing. And, and, and really, the person who actually pushed for this bill, should it be a non-media person, a non-practitioner, someone who doesn't understand how, you know, the sector works? Should that person be the one actually pushing for a regulation of the media space? Marianne, a lot of times, well, to answer your question, anybody can push for regulation, whether he's a participant or not. If you, if you believe that you understand the issues and you believe that there's a room for improvement, then by all means, you know, propose what you want to propose. If you're a member of the National Assembly, propose it as, 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 a, as a bill from the National Assembly. If you're a private citizen, propose it as a private bill. You know, so it doesn't matter who's pushing it. For me, the problem is... The intention behind this proposed amendment and this new bill um, is very suspicious. It's less than altruistic. Um, every time that we have seen um, our government people, whether it's in the legislature, the National Assembly, or in the executive, um, push for regulation, when you look critically at this, you find that they are simply protecting themselves and they are trying to shield themselves from public out outcry and backlash that usually comes from a lot of the very, very terrible behavior that, that we see from them. And, you know, so invariably you find them almost like a knee-jerk reaction coming up with all sorts of regulations that are very, very poorly thought through, you know, and so when those things come to the public, there's usually, you know, an uh, uproar and outcry. You know, so for me, it's not about who's pushing it, it's the motive and the need. I don't think there's any need for this whatsoever. Let me come to you, Nicholas. Um, the, recently, you put out a, t a tweet. Um, you posted something about the fact that um, the media or the broadcast media uh, is one of the weakest links when it comes to you know, journalism in Nigeria. And I'd like to just quote you know, a little bit of what you said. Um, you did say that, um, let me see. You, you talked about the fact that um, the, um, the media is the weakest link or the broadcast media is the weakest link in the industry in Nigeria. It's a very long message that you put out. Why did you feel the need to do that? Because I remember last week when uh, the print had all of their cover uh, pages, you know, with the same uh, information standing up against that particular bill. We really didn't see that same kind of momentum from the broadcast media houses. Is this the reason why you decided to put out that statement? Well, um, <clears throat> I, I really think that um, the broadcast media is a punching bag of the government. I mean, when the government wants to get at the media, um, it just bounces on the on um, the broadcast media because it has used the NBC, which is really, I mean, um, a military um, contraption, if you ask me. Um, I mean, Nigeria is a signatory to the uh, Declaration of Principle of Freedom of Expression in Africa uh, that was adopted by the African Commission of Human Rights in, 20, in 2002. And, um, and that's declaration provides that um, any public authority that exercises power in the area of broadcast and, and telecommunication regulation should be independent and adequately protected against interference, particularly of a political and economic nature. But what we have seen is that the NBC that the government uses to uh, regulate um, the broadcast media is um, an appendage of the minister of um, of the Ministry of Information, which is, I mean, uh, automatically makes it an appendage of of the uh, presidency, and um, it is not independent. It is, I mean, the president appoints whoever he wants to appoint. Um, um, is the, the president to appoint whoever he wants. In the past, 
few years. But I mean, it, had... isn't that detail for every every government agency in Paris, Tato? I mean, literally, no, these the people media, are, the these media, people the are media, all media. appointed. Even INEC that has independence as an appendage just, is not as independent you, as we hope. I, I just read you. I just read you. A, a, I mean, a charter that Nigerian is signatory to. You just quoted two sections of the constitution. There is no other profession in this country that is recognized in the constitution, that is protected by the constitution. You just, I mean, at the start of your program, you quoted the constitution, that the, the media is protected. So, and according to the constitution, any law, any regulation, any decree that contradicts the constitution would have to be being because the constitution is the ultimate law of the country. So no other law, you call INEC, you call all of that, none of these other laws are protected by the, by the constitution. It's only the media. And that's why it's called the fourth estate of the realm. That's why it is protected. So when you use the NBC, that is a government appendage, that is a, that's a government contraption to regulate the, I mean, the broadcast media. But that is what they do. I mean, where, where do I start from? They've come up with all sorts of ridiculous um, 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 directive or decrees, if I want to call it what they actually are. Don't do press release. Don't, uh, where, when you take phone calls, don't take this when somebody says this. Don't take phone calls on, on radio. Uh, they start from the fact that, oh, um, don't gather news on Twitter. Don't share news on Twitter. Now, don't report insurgency. I mean, where are they going to stop? And this is why, because if you look at that, because the NBC specifically regulates uh, the, 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 the um, broadcast media. That is why Lime Mohammed, the Minister of Information, when this bill that Sheldon was talking about was, was, uh, was, was uh, read in the National Assembly, the Minister of Information came and I said, no, 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 we should also include all online uh, publications as well. So because he knows that he doesn't have a control, because the government doesn't have that regulation. The, the, the newspaper and the online publisher are self-regulatory. And the government doesn't have that apron, they don't have that control, they don't have a leash over that. So he's trying to bring um, the online and then all that terrestrial uh, under the NBC before the um, um, bill was suspended. The um, uh, bill that was supposed to um, uh, that the NBC that was the most supposed to... Um, why do you, why do you think that government wants so badly to control the media, especially broadcast media? Because the government is losing it. It's so simple. How if so? The government has, if the government has failed, if the government is concerned and has failed in doing what it should do, I mean, there is widespread poverty in the land. There is insecurity in the land. I mean, there are all kinds of brigandage, all kinds of outlaws doing their thing all over the country. They are, I mean, there's, there's a large swath of this country that the government has no control over anymore. Go to the Northwest, bandit control, large swath of the, I mean, they run roughshod at, at uh, local communities and villages. They kidnap hundreds of people. They kidnap school children. And the government has not had any answer. Thus, I mean, a few days ago, the bandits, so and um, um, quote and unquote bandits, of course, they are terrorists, that's what they are, shut down a, a fighter jet. So what are we talking about here? So the government sees that it, is, it has lost narrative because it has not been proactive. It has failed to do its basic, I mean, I mean, I mean providing um, strong economy and security are one of the basic functions of government. And this government has failed in that way. So what it does is that it's trying to put a blanket over all of this news so that the people does not, I mean, because in, in a year or two time, we are, going to, we are going to have another election. This government is scared that with all of this happening, that um, it has lost all of that, and it may the people may punish it during the, the election. This is all what it ma this is all what matters okay. for the, for for this government. Nothing else. Okay, let me go to Femi. Uh, Femi, when you heard the or you saw the secular that was released by the NBC, they're very good at releasing these seculars, by the way. Um, I mean, when I first heard it, I I wasn't sure it was real. I thought it was one of those you know hoaxes that people post on social media. Uh, but when you heard the NBC expressly say we cannot report on terrorist activity, we cannot name, we cannot give details. 
What exactly was running through your mind and, and how did that make you feel as a person who's very detailed and, you know, as the, the, the kind of job that we do, you need to bring facts and figures to, you know, to bear? Hmm. Okay, so ju just to say this, to, to start with, what, one of the things I did notice, I mean, I, I got the good wind of the circular coming forward and then um, had a few hours, you know, just to confirm that if this was going to be uh, something to go by and that was interesting, but it also gives you room to reflect on um, what the code is about, what, what is in the NBC code, for example. The issue of security and reporting issues of security in the NBC code has always been there. Um, the question is, how has that been interpreted by various media houses and to an extent? If you notice, um, one of the things that's not, that is now occurring is you are finding a strong dependence between online media the newspaper and the broadcasters. Before, what you used to have is people run their stories almost separately. Of course, every media house broadcast stories that is picked up from either the newspaper, and then you have to now depend on the credibility of that newspaper medium uh, in order for you to be able to say, oh, this is an authentic story, this is it, or this is not. That's on one side. But when, when I really did go through that, and I was asking from some of my sources within the same institution about what they had um, in mind when it comes to this. And they said, well, what we are relying on is to say we're only advising the broadcasters, and I'm, I'm saying this explicitly, advising the broadcasters on what is already in the code on, and how to abide by it even more than ever before. Now, here's a scenario that um, I wanted to point out. The last question you asked me, class, and it's interesting because, you know, compared to newspaper publications, Every 15 minutes, you have millions of people listening to you. Um, you, know, you have millions of people listening to you. One wrong phrase, one right phrase, somebody hears that, doesn't come back to get any other version of that story. It runs with it, and there's trouble. Now, I think, to a large extent, we may have done a disservice to Nigerians, and I'm not talking about the government now, done a disservice to an extent to Nigerians every time we reiterate the strength, possibly the progress, possibly um, the damage that Boko Haram is doing to Nigerians. I'm not saying the government now. I insist, not the government. And it leaves you with room to, you know, to reflect once in a while, to say, okay, so now we just made millions of people aware, but then what are they aware of? Where do they run with such stories? And it, it depends on the broadcaster now to be responsible. And the choice of responsibility is something that's often varied. Unfortunately, where I strongly fought the NBC is, and by the way, the NBC has had meetings with broadcasters, and, and I mean top broadcasters, in the last three months about twice, and interpretation of what should be um, continues to be something of interest. But here's the thing. I think to a large extent, um, the NBC could have done a little bit better by encouraging the broadcasters to come forward to say, let's explain what we are saying to you um, with regards to this, I think you could talk about the fact that, oh, so so and so people lost their lives. This is the story that happened. But essentially, we're not asking you to put the likes of the terrorists in a position where they're glorified, mm -hmm. you know, as against, and hey, glorifying the terrorists or not glorifying the terrorists doesn't mean the government is doing right. Oh, trust me, I don't want to even go into the bashing of what they do or not do. But in, in essence, how is the media able to protect? the society, the audience that they speak to, the broadcaster, how is he able to protect the audience they speak to? That is a big responsibility. You could talk about the, the Rwanda genocide. You could talk about the story in Kano, was it in 2014, when there was a story about, oh, if you take this drug, it reduces your fertility, and that led to the death of about 42 health workers. Just speak, and I had a backstory on that, because I also know how irresponsible the person who went out to say that is. So what measure of responsibility um, does a broadcaster interpret from the code that he or she is using day by day? That's where the fundamental question is, is how do you become responsible for your broadcast mm -hmm. without um, necessarily you know, coming off as, you know, uh, as somebody who just wants to ride and just create sensationalism? At the expense so, of Nigerians, so, not ex ex exactly the government. So you're telling me that, and I totally understand where you're coming from, because you see, especially for radio, where you know you have millions and millions of people listening to the radio, you know, on the go, 
It's very important. You're talking about the fact that we need to be sensitive and responsible in the use of words. But could NBC have also been very sensitive in the words? In we've, I mean, I'm, because we're, it's, we're talking about wordplay here, using um, killed instead of died or, you know, slaughtered and some words that could be very insensitive. I totally understand where you're coming from. But of course, that responsibility does lie with the broadcaster. It does lie with the journalist. But if the NBC is telling us not to report, is that not a directive? I, I, I don't. To, 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 to be very candid about the, that reporting part, I think um, it's, it's as good as just asking us to do, uh, to play the catch up. I mean, it's literally to say the president was somewhere before you come to say it happened. Um, I also think uh, to a large extent, the speed in which broadcasting is going, I don't think the government understands the speed of that, the speed of what social media does for, for broadcasting or what broadcasting does for social media or print. It is really, really a challenge that some of our laws cannot catch up with the speed and the effectiveness of what you want to get done. That's on one side. But then I also want to reflect on the idea around when you, when you do say, um, okay, take the space, for example, where people say Fulani heads men, for example, it's a whole ethnic tribe you're ref referring to. Uh, tomorrow, it may be another ethnic tribe you may refer to um, in terms of what you're saying. But I think Kayla has meant certainly, is the, it, will it take a re responsible broadcaster to realize that you do not use ethnic coloration in pushing forward the fact that um, some group of people within that ethnicity um, are keen on killing people? So that's something to reflect on. You, you have the idea of killer headsmen. Imagine when they say um, Niger Delta militants and the likes of that. What are, what's the difference between having a cause and trying to also terrorize a group? We've had unknown gunmen. These are phrases that, oh, simply would use. Um, and people say things like, oh, okay, why can't the government arrest some key other names or some other group of people? And I often ask a very simple question, and I'm always candid about this. When it comes to ethnicity and coloration of maybe certain type of crimes it's a challenge when the broadcaster doesn't even realize he is responsible for that without necessarily getting the NBC involved yes the NBC comes in from time to time they, they really can be words i can't use on, on on tv but it is there that to an extent you should be able to tell that there are certain words that will not come on your broadcast because it is your broadcast that you're responsible for so to an extent they, they, they may be quoting something from the code that they're asking everybody to remember, but then can they stop anybody from reporting what is going on? I think that would be very responsible not to tell people that the fact that, oh, by the way, there's fire outside. Don't pass that pathway. That would be the first element of irresponsibility in Nigeria, among Nigerian broadcasters. But, but, but we've seen it happen, Femi, and I don't, I don't want to dwell, I don't intend to dwell, but we've seen it happen to your sister station and, and someone was yanked off air because uh, a former CBN governor was on the show and he was stating certain facts that did not sit well with the NBC. And it wasn't the presenter who was stating these facts. The presenter asked questions and these answers came. Uh, of course, the presenter's job is to say, where are your facts? Where did you gather this information? But can you really stop people from saying what they want to say while you're trying to gather information? Because we see the NBC come down on stations, especially if a person comes to say something that is not really welcomed by the government. So when you say that you, you're not sure if the NBC can stop people from doing or reporting, yes, they can. That's the answer. So how do we stop the NBC? Or rather, should we come to a table to have this conversation with the NBC as to how to do their jobs? Should we be telling them how to do their job? It's a big deal. But let me just move on back to, <laughs> um, to Shagun. Shagun, you work with... Um, you know, you are part of the CSOs and the guys who are asking um, or kicking against the this, the latest coming from the NBC. And, and you've heard what Femi is saying. We all have a responsibility, whether we're broadcast journalists, whether we're print. We do have a responsibility. We have codes and ethics that we run this business by. But when you have a government... Um, a government department that seems to be doing the bidding of the master where do you where does responsibility come in for both parties okay um okay so so let me say this and i'll say it very quickly because i know that we're beginning to run out of time um i, I know and we all know there's no doubt about it at all that our government um not just this government as a matter of fact our government's 
um, for as long as I can remember, have, have been high-handed, uh, would always look to, to, to stifle public opinion and dissenting voices, right? It's normal. When I say normal, get me right. I mean, this is, it's, it's not unusual in Nigeria. And therefore, we must resist that. It's our duty and our responsibility to stand against that as stoutly as we can. Uh, what we must not do, however, is to allow that desire to stand against oppression to rob us of our sense of objectivity and responsibility, right? So now, in this case, I, I have looked at the letter from the MBC like a million times. And I tell you, Miriam, I, have, I still don't understand why we say it's an order not to report on terrorism. I'm sorry, there is no such order. What the letter has said is very simple, and I think Fleming hit the nail on the head. Be responsible with how you report. Choose your words carefully, because if you are not, then you could inadvertently, and I think in some instances deliberately, further the cause of the enemies of Nigeria, that is the insurgents and the terrorists. Let me give you a simple example. If I will, if you will allow me, I'm going to name two, 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 two platforms, two online platforms, reporting the same story. Premium Times says um, um, Nigerian army kills six terrorists, um, repels attack. Sahara reporter says Boko Haram Iswa overruns Nigeria army base. The same story. <laughs> you know, so it's it's a very simple thing. I think what what we're saying is. We must present the facts as they are so that we, the public knows. But because we know we have a platform and we have millions of people listening to us and the wars that we're fighting are largely battles for the minds of people. Let's not forget this. It's an ideological war. That's why they're called terrorists. So when we report news in certain ways, what we do inadvertently is we spread terror. So if it, something has happened and um, it's bad, Say it's bad. You don't have a choice because you can't lie about the truth. But in saying it's bad, you can choose how you say it's bad. And I think that's what the NBC is saying. If they try to gag anybody, as they have seen, they will be stoutly resisted and they will be refused and they will not get away with it. So okay. I think, you know, for me, it's, it's a simple case of let all be responsible. Let's hold government accountable as we've always done and we'll continue to do whether they like it or not. But let's also hold each other accountable so we don't further the cause of people that are fighting against our interests. You know, so for me, I think I'd like to keep it short that way. Okay. Back to you, Nicholas. Uh, I, I see that um, you, you, Premium Times was cited in that um, analogy. But um, going forward, how can Nigeria play on the same... Uh, level with international media because we still seem to be playing catch up with the fact that um, our governments, past and previous, um, are, present and previous, I beg your pardon, are still yet to come to terms with the power of the media and how the media should work. We also see that most of the media houses in Nigeria are somewhat owned by government and and the the few that are independent have a problem with being extremely objective or you know but there seems to be some freedom of course in nigeria compared to other african countries where we see the media you know not being able to state things the way they should be stated yes we see stories coming but those stories most times uh, are watered down so how do we going forward how do we as the media become more responsible and also still stand on both feet uh, to stare government down and let them understand that we also have a role to play in service to the people who are looking to us as the final hope or the hope of sorts uh, to give them proper information. And, and we're also a conduit of sorts for the people to be able to air their views, especially for radio, um, you know, as concerning our, the leadership in the country. And so going forward, what do we need to do? Are we supposed to meet each other halfway, and I'm talking about the NBC, uh, uh, the government, and the media. I, I really don't think that the media role is to meet anybody halfway. I mean, um, our role is specifically stated. I mean, uh, we, we are watchdog. We are the watchdog. We make sure that government do not... I mean, um, we, we keep the government in check and hold... The, I mean, the, what, the, what does the media do? I mean, the, the media um, 
uh, I mean, uh, speak truth to power. So we, you cannot speak truth to power by meeting somebody halfway. It's an uncompromising job. By saying that we should meet somebody halfway, then we are compromising. So um, this is where I stand with, with, with that. I don't think the media should meet anybody halfway. I think the media has its role to play, and which is to inform the people. I mean, why, why is the government, I mean, getting worried over, over some of these issues? I mean, if you ask me. Largely, if you look at, go back and look at the reporting of the insurgency, the media, the Nigeria media, I think, has been fair. There are, there are one or two oddballs, I mean, blogs and all of that, who will report. And this is, this is everywhere in the world. Everywhere in the world that you have media, that uh, um, you're going to have some kind of um, uh, media. Is it, yeah, is it, yeah. Anti-government. And there, 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 there was a fringe, was a fringe media group that does their own thing, you know. They are always at the fringes of the whole media industry. That, that is what they do. Go anywhere in the world, you will see this. Um, that should not be a problem. That the government should, because of it, be issuing out decrees and directives over and over again. Go back, take 10 stories about banditry. Take 10 stories about Boko Haram report. And ask me, from, from credible Nigerian newspapers, and ask me if the media has not reported them well. Of course, some people will go with traditional headlines and, and all of that. Those can be handled with, I mean, individual, uh, we see them do that, some newspaper, some online media do, do, do all of that. But largely, people are able to separate the wheat from the chaff. Mm -hmm. That's why people say, oh, this is a credible media organization, or oh, I'm wrong with it, this is said by the Guardian, oh, this is from Punch, so definitely it has to be um, 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 credible. Mm -hmm. Oh, premium that wrote this, is that, oh, not this X and Y people that we are already known to do sensational reporting. Now, but the, what is it dangerous what the government is doing? I absolutely disagree with Shelby when he says, oh, the, the media can resist the NBC. Hell no, the media cannot resist. The broadcast media has shown over and over and over and over. And are, over. You, are, are you <laughs> saying that, are you saying that the, that, that the That's, NBC is extremely powerful? That we cannot yeah, stand yeah, up to you know, it what? with, this, uh, with, um, with the, co with the code one. that we have you and the constitution one. that covers us. You're telling us that a group no, of persons are more powerful stronger. than the constitution. Look for, well, I'm coming to that. Look for a word stronger than extreme. That is what the NBC, the NBC has a news around the neck of all broadcast media. If the NBC says jump, all broadcast media will be asked how high should we jump. <laughs> There is no, there is no way. Of, let's not, let's not. I mean, deceive ourselves well, as, as, about this. We're, we're out, we're out of time. And, and, this work, and this is what I have advocated. Now, you, it's a good thing you talk about the constitution. And this is what I have been pushing on my social media platform. Said, has any media company in this country tried to test that constitutional right that they have? Uh -huh. Go to court and say this directive contradicts the constitution. Let the court decide if indeed. That the political constitution. Nicholas, or Nicholas, no I, Nicholas, no, I, I, I will bring you back I mean, to have this debate with you and let's see if we can talk about testing the waters of the constitution. But finally, Femi, a, a last word from you before we go because we're out of time. Well, one of the things I think is very important that uh, media, broadcast media, come to realize is to explore some of the tools that which they would use to engage the NBC going forward. We've not really had a long history of many moments of engaging as such. There's been few occasions where broadcast stations do take NBC to court, but that is not something one could uh, easily draw onto over and over again. It's all about propaganda. It's all about the use of words that comes in from different places. The government needs also to tell its own side of the story. If they choose to tell what their own version of the truth, if they want it to be covered and not being, uh, not just the, the other side being covered as much as so it has already been covered, they mm. need to speak a little bit more, not even so much as balance. But I even to be able to tell what other sides of the story, mm. whether opposing or on the same side, um, the military needs to say more about what they're doing and why they're doing it, why they're doing it, sir, so that we don't just look like every day it's like it's disaster, disaster, disaster. 
But do you, and no measure but, but if there's a good story. story to tell, I'm sure that the press will tell it. On that note, guys, I want to say thank you. Nicolas Ibekwe is a Premium Times. Femi Diamele is uh, of Nigeria Info FM Abuja. And Shegu Shopitan is of Act Network. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Very interesting conversation. Let's do it again. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short, short break. And when we return, we'll discuss the legal aspect of the defection of Zamper State Governor Belo Matawale. Stay with us. <laughs>